Okay, Prince William and the Duchess of Cambridge packing up a U-Haul. So I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Is this a status move up? I mean, for him, them to be in Fort Belvedere in the Windsor Estate? I think maybe it is. And do they like it? Is that what they want to do? Some of Catherine's friends have been, uh, they say in the, in, the, in the rags, if you could believe it, that that's all she ever wanted to do was be a mistress of a big country estate. So let's see. So this is the Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. Another great box, nice magnetic clasp, good, sturdy. This feels like really fine stationery would come in this box. So it's that kind of quality. And uh, it's this beautiful color around. It's got a nice little introduction on the back that talks about the tarot and, and why it's depicted the way it is. And uh, this artist questions for the cards. There are actually 82 cards here. So this Relative Tarot by Carrie Paris. This is a deck uh, that will instruct you how to determine your tarot blueprint and your personal birth card and annual card cards, shadow cards, and karmic cards, and there are actually 82 cards in here instead of 78, and I'll, um, I'll show you, you know, how you can use them, and I'll explain why why that is even. So I'm going to start with the booklet, and um, it's a nice, uh, large, uh, beautifully sepia-toned uh, kind of a booklet with all depictions of the cards in there, which is always really, really helpful. In here, there are... Uh, the author tells you a little bit about her and her family and her personal inspirations for coming to this deck, which are indeed very personal. And uh, so a um, what happened here? It seemed like a friend um, in the guidebook. Uh, the, her, her, she was encouraged by uh, a fellow seer. Um, and I don't think she was a seer at the time, and an, an intuitive friend suggested that she could communicate with the, her relatives for the past. And she says she did that to interpret the images and the pictures of the faces of the loved ones represented in the deck. So tons of personal intention uh, went into the creation of cards, which I love. And even a dear friend of hers uh, named the deck. So, but the, the deal with inside here is that there's two sets of cards, and I'll show you how that works. It's got a nice little pull here to help you get the cards out. But it comes with some extra cards in the pack, which I've tucked away under the ribbon. And I'll show you what that's about. Okay, in just a minute. So, they're, not, they're kind of actually a finish weight of cards, but they've got a nice glossy finish, and they've got a beautiful gold uh, gild on the edges. And uh, the pictures are nice, and they're kind of showcased in a picture frame kind of thing, and uh, lots of rich color. And it tells you under each of the cards how to use them. And then if you're going to use them, as she suggests, for uh, tarot, personal tarot cards or birth cards, it's got even numbers here. and tells you how to use these numbers um, for that, uh, which is very interesting. But I really think you need the guidebook to kind of get through that. So what's going on here with the extra cards? So for uh, the Lover's card, which is um, the number six of the Major Arcana, it gives you three choices. I've got two of the choices here, and there's one choice that I picked here, and it's in the stick somewhere. <laughs> but uh, so this choice right here is two, um, two men. This choice right here is two women. And then the choice that I chose to leave in this deck is a man and a woman. And just because that's what I'm, I see is more true to kind of all the tarot cards. But I would choose these uh, interchangeably if, if uh, you know, it seemed like that was the right thing to do for that read at the time. So, so that's uh, two extra cards that you need there for the lover's card, the number six. Then... For justice and strength, they've been numbered hyster historically uh, in each other's place uh, with various uh, tarot cards before a certain period and after a certain period. Uh, so, number and here you have three choices for justice and three choices for strength with just three extra cards, period, for the, the deck. I've got two of the choices here, justice and strength, and uh, uh, two of the choices uh, inside the deck. So it's four cards, actually. So, and what happens is, in some tarot decks, historically, justice has been numbered as number eight. But in some tarot decks, it's been numbered as number 11. So, 
it gives you that choice. You can either number them in the, the one full suit of, of the Major Arcana as Justice is number 8 and Strength is number 11, or vice versa, which is what I've chosen to do, you can have them labeled as Strength number 8 and Justice number 11. So that, and that way you end up with four extra cards uh, completely uh, in this situation. So that was kind of a long explanation. But it's always good to lay them out here no matter how you do. And you know, you can just leave all the cards in the deck and just divine whatever comes up at the time, I suppose. You know, what's wrong with that? As long as you understand what you're looking at. And, and if you get two justices in a draw, uh, be willing to, you know, etc. Or three lovers in one draw, be willing to decide how you're going to deal with that uh, as a rule of thumb before you start your readings, I would think is a useful thing to do. Maybe you can just do it off the cuff. But these are, like I said, the relative tarot. Pretty cool. Okay, so Prince William and Catherine have that move. Let's find out what we can see. Prince William, Catherine, and that move. What is that all about? Prince William, Catherine, and that move to Fort Belvedere. Do this. That's it. Okay, Prince William. Now I've got, um, let's see, three questions. This first one will be uh, Why are Prince William and Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge, moving to Fort Belvedere at Windsor Estates? Why? Three cards. Just why? Okay. We have one, two, and three. Okay. Why are they moving to Belvedere Estates, Windsor Castle? Okay, so this is the Three of Wands. This is long-term planning. Very interesting how the cards just fall right into it. So yeah, this is part of the long-term plan. This is getting them accustomed to being right there at the seat of power. Um, the next card for that, this is the Ace of Swords, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, Law. And so that's, what, yeah, they're there to be at the knee of the monarch to learn all of that. The last card in this reading, the Five of Pentacles, is being left out in the cold. Yeah, because that's the fact what it is. Even though you're here studying, uh, you know, for this long-term plan, all the rules go along with it, you're still left out in the cold because Charles is the one that's going to be in charge. But it's a good idea for you to learn your lesson. So that's the first one, and that sounds about right. Now for the next question, we've got, let's see. Uh, do they want to move there specifically? Do, it's very interesting. Wow. Do they want to move there specifically? And the card that jumbled everything up is temperance. So that's finding a balance. That's finding, uh, you know, some kind of a happy middle ground, which is exactly what he's got to do. Okay, so do they want to move there specifically? Some have said that that's the kind of a, an atmosphere that Catherine would have liked. Apparently it's very country, very uh, relaxed in that way. So, three cards. Okay, do they want to move there specifically? Two, three. Do they want to move there specifically? Okay, first card. Okay, this is the Three of Swords. This is a broken heart. So, I don't know. And the way that's depicted here in this uh, setup, uh, with this uh, fellow, he's got a sword through his head. Um, he's got another uh, two more swords in his hand. And then all of this is displayed over that uh, symbol, of course, of a broken heart. So, that's the first card. Do they want to move there? Uh, the Six of Wands. So, the Six of Wands is a victory, as a matter of fact. And you see it here. Now, this uh, poor fellow, he reminds you of the uh, the labored slaves of the United States and uh, getting out of that. So, you know, he perhaps is uh, getting ready to celebrate some sort of a victory after having been held back. Huh. And then uh, the last card of that, do they want to move there, is this two... Of wands. Two of wands are short-term plans. So short-term plans, uh, wands are actions, forward movement, and plans. And so, yeah, this is part of looking into the future, getting ready for that long-term plan that we just talked about. That's interesting that I would follow that. That's perfect. My screen went off here, and that's where I have my questions. Okay, so the last question 
Uh, this will be six cards, maybe ten if it's really interesting. But uh, is William getting ready for the thrones? Silly question. But uh, let's see what the cards say about it. Is William... You know what? There's a card in there backwards. Is, and I don't mean upside down. I mean absolutely backwards. I saw the back of the card. Is William getting ready for the throne? Is, there it is right there. Is William getting ready for the throne? So this is twice that I've had to ri rifle through the cards uh, this week. So is William... Getting ready for the throne. Is William getting ready for the throne? Is William getting ready? I mean, in a more serious way than maybe we think. Okay, first card. I'm going to go six, two, three, four, five. Is William getting ready for the for the throne? Let's see what these cards have to tell us. William, are you getting ready for the throne? Is there more to this than we may realize? Okay, so the eight of wands, and you know, wands are actions, plans, forward movement. And this is a lot of things happening at the same time. But it's interesting that this fellow is writing in on these plans. So that's very interesting. I hadn't seen that before uh, in a in a in a, a deck. Um, so that's the signifier. The challenge to that. Uh, is the Wheel of Fortune. Oh, yeah, that's right. So it's all about what happens. You know, if your dad gets sick quick, there you are. The base of this reading, then, is the devil, ill intentions. So, yeah, this is uh, something that you don't want to think about. And uh, so this is one of those things that you don't want to happen, but it can get you excited at the same time, don't you think? I mean, honestly. Okay, in the past of this reading, the magician. Okay, so this is really having everything available to you to make a thing happen. And I think this really speaks to the uh, the training that's, get, that's getting ready to happen. This is what this is all about. Uh, the sky of this reading, uh, with the hangman, looking to think from another perspective. And that's exactly what you'll be doing. You'll be ready at any moment to flip around and uh, be uh, upright. Very interesting. Uh, the future of this is the Three of Swords. Well, yeah, it's a broken heart. Whatever would happen to, uh, to, to, you know, to facilitate the, the learning that you're doing, getting ready for the throne, is the result of a broken heart. Let's do four more cards just for the heck of it. Okay, the self of that question, you know, are you getting ready for the throne? Uh, is uh, Seven of Cups is, yeah, yeah, wondering if you've done enough. That's what the Seven of, no, this is actually illusion and delusion. Sorry, forgive me, I'm thinking of the Seven of Coins. But the Seven of Cups is, yeah, so many choices, so many things going on, and this fellow is really kind of blind to all of that, as you would be until you were really in the hot seat. The environment that that's in is uh, this Queen of Cups. Okay, you're in, you're in a learning place, and you're in the environment of your loving uh, grandmother, Queen of Cups. Very interesting. Uh, the Hopes and the Fears for this it is a, oh look at that the six of wands again the hopes and the fears is that victory yeah it's it's both it really is and then the final outcome for this is the moon secrets being revealed that's interesting so are you studying uh, for to take over the throne are you getting ready to take over the throne that's kind of the question uh, for this long reading and uh, with the secrets being revealed uh, maybe maybe yeah maybe that's a fact interesting. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by, we'll do it again. Ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.